All right, thanks everyone for joining this live stream. We're doing Fusion 360, getting started. And um, wanted to first talk about um, how do you create some models that um, don't, you don't need a lot of experience or it's your first time just getting started with Fusion 360. And you know it's easy to get lost in sketching, dimensions, constraints, all the best practices. I've covered those a lot in some of my other videos. So today, I just wanna jump right in and let's build some models. So a few things we wanna to build today is we're wanting to build um, you know, a few different models like a wrench, a whistle, whistle with a ball inside of it and then maybe like a simple crayon or a crayon case or a pencil holder you know these are some fun like 3d prints that you can build um for you know getting started so let's get jump into fusion and how do we build these quickly to build some confidence and get <clears throat> used to using the tool okay so the first thing we want to do we're going to build that wrench and I'm doing a new design and that's where we're working. And in this new design, we first want to just start sketching an object and then working from there. So first thing I'm going to pick a plane to work on, I'm going to use this front plane. And what I want to do is sketch out the very rough shapes and it's okay if they overlap so if we're doing that wrench i want to do a circle a rectangle and you notice i'm not messing with dimensions just yet and this immediately brings me into the whole viewing and camera thing that's going on in fusion so the cameras are how are we looking at the sketch over on your view cube up in the top right if you were to click around, you can go to the home page, or excuse me, the home view, go to the front view. Um, you can use your middle mouse button to zoom in and out, and you can also um, you know, rotate with that middle mouse button. Now, I've covered that in a different video on the interface, how you can set up different options for how it rotates. So if you're used to another tool, like AutoCAD, SolidWorks, whatever, you can mimic those those style of solutions. So um, check that out. Um, I can link that in the description below. But what we want to do is sketch this circle, big circle, a little circle, and a rectangle. Great. So we've got a really simple shape. That was super easy. We did a sketch on a face or a plane, excuse me. And now what we want to do is give it depth. And we do that by hitting extrude. And we can hit that extrude button, select each zone. I'm going to do all the zones. I could also window select them. And then I can drag this up to do it kind of just by feel or can type in values in this distance. So I'm going to drag it up. We're not really messing with dimensions just yet. We're doing everything kind of by feel just to build some confidence in making this model. The next thing I want to do is cut out that shape to make the wrench. So I'm going to go select the face, go up to sketch, pick the sketch button, and I'm going to search for a certain type of sketch shape, like a hex. And there's not actually a hex, so I'm going to use S key on my keyboard. I hit S and the search comes up. And it's called a polygon. And there's a few styles. And this lets you choose how many sides of a polygon would you like to have. You can see this number next to my polygon and it's showing a six. And that is a hex. So uh, that's actually great. That's what I want. And I want the point to kind of come out this way. And so I drop this shape, and now we have a hex shape. We could cut that out, but I also want to just go ahead and connect a rectangle. So I draw this rectangle. In addition to that, we're going to cut out this whole area. So again, it's an extrude. We can finish the sketch and go to extrude. And what I want to do is select all of these areas. And I'll just slowly hover over each one selecting each zone 
And you'll notice in the operation that sometimes it's got the right thing, like a cut. Sometimes it doesn't. And I want it to be a cut. And I drag it all the way through. You can make it intelligent by saying all the way through so that no matter what, it always cuts all the way through. That's uh, something we get into a little bit later as you get you know, more comfortable with Fusion and other CAD tools. But we've cut that out and we're almost there. Maybe we want a hole on this one. So let's start another sketch on this face. Grab this circle. Sketch a circle. Again, I'm going to hit E for extrude or find the extrude button. And what are we doing? A cut. Make sure it's doing the cut. I'm going to move this over by hitting the home button or the front button, whichever one. And we'll hit cut. So we're cutting that out. Terrific. Now we have our wrench. And if we ever wanted to edit any of this, we could do that. So if you want to look down below is this timeline. And that's great for finding each step. Now, I know we didn't go to the trouble of dimensioning and adding all the right constraints, but that's just for another day. For today, we're just trying to get our, you know, comfortable making shapes quickly and then going back and manipulating them. So I do have that first sketch, and that's what I could edit and make this a little bigger. Drag that out, hit finish, and the whole thing updates. This is the depth of that first solid, and then this is the size of the hex cutout. If I right click, choose edit sketch. Now we could drag this and make this a, you know, a little bit bigger, but I want to be careful. I haven't added enough relationships to make this easy to manipulate. And that's where dimensions and constraints are so much better for, um, you know, making things behave better. So we're going to save again, save that for another day. Um, and we can drag this close enough. Looks good. We should probably add a constraint there, huh? Cool. So that's our wrench. That's our first one. Great. All right. So what if we want to do that kind of rounded object, right? So the cylinder, super easy. That point, a little bit trickier. So new design. I hit the plus sign. I do a new sketch. Select the front plane. And what I want to do for a round object is sketch out the shape I want for the revolve. For a revolve, anytime I'm doing a round object, I'm doing a revolve. The way I think of it is I sketch half of the object. Maybe this will help you think of it. So this is half of that kind of case. I just sketch this shape and I want to revolve it around an axis. It's as if it's spinning around and creating the geometry. So I'm going to find the next feature called Revolve. You choose the profile that you want to revolve. You choose the line that you want it to revolve around. So I'm going to choose Profile, good to go. Axis is this middle one for me. And you can see it spins it. And even the preview is showing what it's giving. Now what if we did this side? I'm going to expect to kind of this like inverted design perfect okay so it's totally sensitive to which axis line you select and you can spin 360 180 whatever amount of degree you don't have to go all the way around we do we want to in our example it's a new body hit okay hit that home view and there we go okay so i have two parts of the timeline, the sketch and the feature of the revolve. So if we right click and edit the sketch, it takes us back into the sketch. If I just drag this, I can make it sharper, I can make it taller, fatter. Just by dragging, this is going to dynamically change the shape. Let's do something crazy. I'll hit finish the sketch. It redraws it in this shape. Okay. And this is, again, where dimensions later are going to be huge, where you can come in and numerically drive this, and then it makes updating it so much better. That's something that we'll learn you know, later on as we get more comfortable with Fusion. 
But this is great for now is just being able to sketch these shapes and understand revolve, understand that extrude and those cuts. That's what we've done so far. Let's do one more today. So I want to build this whistle and I even want to have the, the ball inside. So if I look at my bodies inside, I've got a ball inside, I've got a whistle. We could make this transparent, make it easier to see, but this is what we want to build, okay? So this is kind of overwhelming if you're brand new to Fusion or any CAD tool. So let's just piece it together. New design, and I'm not gonna worry about components or assembly. I'm just gonna say this is all part of one design today. I'm gonna start a sketch front plane just like that first example I'm gonna do a big circle I'm gonna do a rectangle coming off of this thing and I'm not even gonna worry about where they overlap I'm gonna extrude it I'm gonna extrude all of the profiles together and there we go we've got our rough shape done so far okay now you might be wondering how are we going to hollow this thing out how are we going to you know kind of get rid of the inside so um that one command we can learn today if we do a search s key for search type in shell the shell command is super cool for doing exactly that if we choose the body one body we have to give the thickness of the walls and we'll just type in a value and we'll hit okay. Did it do anything? Well, this is a fun excuse to find a, a cool inspection tool called section analysis or cross section or whatever. Select a face, the top face for your cross section and drag it down a little bit and you've got a visual cutting tool it's all it is is a visual it's like a special x-ray camera and if you ever want to turn it off it's this analysis button here you click that on and off great so i've got this cross section and now what i want to do is put a sphere inside i want to create that slit at the top for the air and a slit here now we could have done um, we could have removed that face with the shell but we want a special slit so we're going to control it so let's do an easy one sketch on this face so i'll select the face start a sketch grab a rectangle i'm just going to sketch out the shape i want and we're going to use that as a cut i'll go to extrude we'll select the sketch that we drew and we'll cut out some of that and now we have that slot that airway going in great and the next thing we want to do is a special slit right here okay so there are a lot of ways we could do that but let's try something kind of kind of wild let's do a plane that starts down below so I'm gonna do a plane construction plane just like this one select the face and drag it down a little bit that's where I'm gonna start this brand new plane this new sketching spot and now on this new plane select it start a sketch we're gonna sketch our cutter and I'm just gonna draw it out in space so it's really clear what I'm doing I don't have to do a big triangle but I'm going to just for um, simplicity I want this thing to cut you know a certain depth so how do we do that? Well, let's go up to extrude, select the shape, drag it a ways. How far do we want to go? We're doing it kind of by hand. So I'll just drag a certain distance. You can see where it's cutting. The cut's happening, good. Hit okay, and it cuts that slot out. And if I look really close, that's now has that nice little angled face that I was hoping to have. Awesome, okay. So in any time, you can go find these sketches and hit the little eyeball, the visibility sign, and that will hide anything you're not wanting to see. 
And the final thing for today is I'm trying to put the sphere or the ball inside of this whistle. So um, I'm going to show this tool where it's pre-built. If you go up to create, there's some pre-built shapes in Fusion. And I have kind of a love-hate relationship with these. But when you're brand new, they're kind of sometimes helpful to, to use. So I'm going to use the sphere. And I'm just going to draw it out in space. I'm going to, you know, sketch on this face. Just kind of click and drag and it drops a ball and then we can, you know, move it or, you know, size it. Hit OK. We got a new body. All right. So how do we move that thing inside that new body? I'm going to type in search for move. S key. Type in move. Find move copy. Select this body. All right, um, and we can do this a number of ways. One is just doing it by kind of views. So go to the top view and drag it kind of where you want it. Go to the front view and then drag it. And then go to like the left view or the right view and get it kind of centered there. And now that should be pretty well kind of centered where I want it. And I'll hit OK. And I'm going to change the appearance of the whistle. So I hit A on my keyboard, brings up appearances. Let's search for glass. I'm going to do like this nice blue glass for the whistle. And now that's a little bit easier to see because it's got kind of transparent. Um, we can see through the whistle and we've got that sphere inside. Awesome. How would we resize the sphere, the ball? Right click on it, edit feature. Um, you can see it goes back in time to where it was and let's go up to like a bigger number. Yay. Hit OK. It should resize and then remove it back where it's supposed to sit. And there we go. So today Fusion 360 hopefully you feel just a little more confidence. Um, we've covered, you know, three models, just kind of different approaches to building three different design examples. but. Do this on your own. This is a great way to practice. Find some cool shapes out there that aren't crazy complicated and, and make them yourself, right? And then um, we've got some, I've got some other playlists for you guys, for you new users out there that'll help you get started with exercises. Talks about dimensioning and constraints and best practices. That's next, right? To step into that. But for now, just keep, keep building and designing. Thanks for joining. I'll see you in the next video.